This is a video sew along for the Sweet Sunday bag. I need to make one of these for my niece and I decided I would take videos as I sewed so you can see the process. All right, so I'm gonna start out with the strap pieces. This is piece A. You should have two pieces. I already ironed them in half. Uh, this is very thick fabric, so I am doing the alternate method for, with these straps. But if you have just normal straps, you can sew them right sides together and then turn them inside out just like a normal tube. For these though, I folded them in half. This is the same right and wrong, <laughs> but I folded them in half, wrong sides together, and then I'm going to fold these edges in half an inch and clip them to look like that. So this fabric does pretty well with just finger pressing, so I'm gonna press it in half an inch. And clip it. You may hear my kids' shows in the background. I've given up on trying to record without them around. Oops, oh, I caught that on my foot. Okay. Now I'm going to top stitch down the edge. Now if you turned it like a tube and then turn it right side out, you also need to uh, press it in half. And you can top stitch it or not, but you need to have this flat piece. So I went ahead and marked before going that I need, I marked three inches from the end. I'm going to fold this in half starting there and clip it on both sides. I did the same with this piece, so I found my three inch mark. And we're gonna stitch together this part of the handle only, so the ends will stay flat, and this side, this middle part will be in half. I'm gonna stitch from this side so I can do my best to stitch right on top of my previous seam. I increased my stitch length a little bit. I don't know if you can see how wavy my seam is. My machine really needs to go to the shop. It has some issues with thicknesses right now. And I made sure to top our uh, back stitch at the end. Okay, very good. So I have one 
handle. Now my second one. forgetting that this is not in my camera view. I'm just clipping seams. All right, second one. Okay, next I have my piece B and I'm gonna take the two exterior pieces. I'm sewing the plain version. I don't have a, I'm not gonna be making a video of the ruffled version. So I went ahead and before uh, the video I marked 1.75 inches from each side. And I'm going to, sorry, I need the, the wrong side facing out. I'm gonna clip these in place and then I'll be basting these here. finger. Okay, now I'm going to baste across both of these. The seam allowance for this pattern is half an inch. It's a little bigger than I normally do, but uh, because the pattern pieces, I gave a, a table for people to cut them out from the table instead of using pattern pieces if they want to. I just felt it was easier to uh, have things by half and whole numbers instead of um, the odd numbers they'd be if I, if I use my normal 3 8 seam. Okay, so I basted and I made sure to stay in with that half inch seam allowance. Okay, next I need, once again, piece B pieces, but I'm gonna need two of the interior, the lining pieces. going to sew them together across this top. Sorry, I keep putting my stuff out of the camera's view. I'm getting used to my new camera setup. It's part of the reason I'm recording. This is kind of as a test. Sew it with half inch seam allowance. And when I go over the straps, I'm gonna go over them forward, back, forward again, because I want them to be nice and strong.
All right. Now I'm going to fold these down. You can press it if you need to. But I'm doing that with my fingers. And now I am going to uh, sew across the top. In the pattern, I say that you can also baste around the outside edges, but since we're gonna be basting this to another piece in one of the next steps, I'm just gonna do all the basting at once. So right now I'm just gonna sew across the top. But if you want, you can baste around the whole piece too. two outsides of our pockets are done. We now need two of our lining B pieces. This piece, we need two of those. And two of our side border C pieces, which should be made from exterior fabric. And we are going to sew these together across the top. So in right sides together. I know it's hard to tell with mine because I did not interface these pieces so there's no right or wrong side, but I'm sewing right sides together. It's one of the reasons I like using canvas because you don't have to interface, so you can save on interfacing and it's pretty durable. Okay, so I'm going to flatten this seam and then I'm going to top stitch on both sides of the seam just to lay it nice and flat. So now I'm going to take one of these finished pieces, pocket pieces, and this inside pocket piece, and I'm going to put them right on top of each other and baste around the whole edge. Oh, 
All right, I went ahead and clipped all these off camera and now I'm gonna baste around. Okay, both my sides are now finished, and you can see that this forms the pocket. Now we need piece D, one of your bottom pieces. So you'll need, the, the pattern calls for you to cut one exterior and one lining piece. So get your exterior, and you will be like a this has no interfacing, but pretend it does. You'll be doing right sides together with the bottom of the each pocket side. And then I'm gonna take the other pocket side and sew this side, this side of the bottom, the base to, to this bottom of the pocket. All right, and I'm going to uh, top stitch along the base. Now if you are, if it's getting really thick because of all the interfacing, you can always trim the seam allowance just on the base side to try to reduce the bulk. Mine doesn't have a whole ton of bulk because I'm not using interface on my exterior pieces. But it's still thick fabric so this can help. Again, I'm only cut, trimming the seam allowance for the base piece. Okay, so now I'm going to top stitch on the base piece. done with the exterior of the bag. Now I just need the side pieces that I did not put within close reach. Where are they? Okay. Piece E exterior gusset. Now this will be a little easier if you mark the middle of that one of the short sides for each of these. Okay, so I've got the, the middle of those marked and I'm gonna mark the center of my base too. 
on each of these sides. Now you'll need lots of clips or pins for this stick. Take that part you just marked on the right side of your piece and put it right sides together with the middle of the base and clip. Okay, so I clipped a few places on the bottom then I'm going to go up and I'm going to match it up on this top corner. And I'm going to clip down towards the corner, but not all the way yet. Now I'm going to swing this around and do the other corner other top corner all right I'm going to pin down as close to these corners as possible I use lots of pins here or clips All right, so I've got my gusset pinned. Now you can either pin it or sew it one of two ways. You can sew it with the gusset up, and it's a little easier to control the bag, especially if you've got a heavy bag, or you can sew it with the gusset down, and that, it's a little easier to see where you're supposed to pivot, because you're supposed to pivot on that seam, and that can be a little harder to tell from the top. So I'm gonna, since my bag is fairly light, easy to maneuver, I'm gonna sew from this with the gusset on the bottom. And my advice for this is to take it slow, especially as you get down to the bottom corner. And I'm kind of pulling the underneath of the bag under. Trying to keep this side as straight as possible. I'm sewing down to this seam that I pointed out earlier. Now I'm gonna make sure my needle is down and I'm going to pivot, and while I pivot, I'm gonna pull this side of the bag over there and straighten this up so that now this bottom seam is as straight as possible. And then I start sewing straight across. to where I need to pivot. Move this part of the bag out of the way. And make this seem as straight as possible. And go up. Okay, perfect. So you'll see that you have a little bit of the corner sticking out. That's fine. I'm going to trim that part. Back 
fact, I'm going to trim this whole seam just a little bit. So let's see how we did. There. Pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to do the other side. my other gusset. Oh, it fell on the floor. Okay, I pinned, clipped this other gusset, and this one I'm going to do with the gusset up so you can see the difference. with this gusset on top you can make sure that it stays straight with the edge and you're sewing until you're about half an inch ruler, half an inch from the edge or you can kind of lift up your fabric underneath to see if you're at that seam yet when you get there have your needle down lift up your foot Pivot. And pull the underside as straight as possible. this side and moving the inside that way And I'm going to trim like I did before. Now time to turn the whole thing right side out. After all, we have a drop-in lining, so this will need to be right side out for that. And I think this side may be even neater than the first. Maybe. Okay. So we are now finished with the exterior. <laughs>